Hi, in this short video we consider a few linear functions of normal distributions that we will need when we look at the three classic test principles. So first, remember that one of the properties of maximum likelihood estimator was asymptotic normality, so square root of t multiplied by the difference between the maximum likelihood estimator and the true at the true parameters that is asymptotically normally distributed with mean zero and variance v so this is a k by 1 vector this is a k by 1 vector and this is a scalar term so this has a k variate normal distribution with mean zero and covariance matrix V, which is k by k. So we can take this expression, equation 1, and we can rewrite in the following way. So the square root of t multiplied by the difference is asymptotically normal. That's what we had from before. And first, we note that this implies that the difference between the maximum likelihood estimator and the true parameters, that will be asymptotically normal with mean zero and t inverse v as the covariance. Finally, we can just rewrite this and we get that the asymptotic distribution of the maximum likelihood estimator is a normal distribution with mean true parameters theta and covariance t inverse v. So this is what we will use when we derive the test statistics of the classical test principles. This is based on this. So we need a few properties of linear transformations of normally distributed variables in order to derive those. So first, consider variable y, which is a scalar. So this is a one by one. And let's assume that y is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma. So both of these are scalar terms. Let c be a scalar. So this means that c is 1 by 1. Then it holds that if we look at c multiplied by y, that will be normally distributed with mean c times mu. And it will have a variance of c squared sigma square. And note that this is again a scalar term and it has a single univariate normal distribution with mean c times mu and variance c square multiplied by sigma square. So this first result, let's call that S1. Next, now Assume that capital Y is a k-dimensional vector. It's normally distributed with mean m and variance capital sigma, like this. So Y is a k by 1 vector, m is a k by 1 vector of means, and capital sigma is a k by k covariance matrix. Then let R be a j by k matrix then it holds that if we multiply r y that will be normally distributed with mean r m and covariance r sigma square no sigma uh, capital sigma r prime like this so note that the dimension we have here r is j by k and y is k by 1 so together multiplying these together gives a j by one vector. So we create a new variable which is a j-dimensional normal distribution and again here we have j by k, k by one so the mean vector will be a j by one. Finally if we look at the covariance it will be a j by j matrix. Oops. So the second result let's call that S2. So 
So, three, assume that y is a standard normal distribution and it's a scalar. So one by one, one by one, one by one. And it has a standard normal distribution, which means that it has a mean of zero and a variance of one. Then it holds that if we look at y square, that will follow a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom. That's S3. Four. Now, let x be normally distributed, with mean zero and variance small v, and let x be a scalar. Then we have a scalar here and we have a scalar here. So v is just the variance, then it holds that if we instead look at 1 over the square root of v, oops, multiply by x squared, then that will be chi-squared distributed with one degree of freedom. We call this S4. And to see why this is the case, first use our result as one from before. Then it holds that if we look at one over the square root of v multiplied by x, that will follow a standard normal distribution. So multiplying through by one over the square root of v gives us a standardized normal distribution. So this is just standardization of the x variable. Second, we use the results from S3 and that implies the result S4. Because if we take the square of this standard normal distribution, then it's going to be chi-square distributed with one degree of freedom. So now assume that both y and x are standard normally distributed. These are scalars. And additionally, assume that y and x are independent. If that's the case, then y squared plus x squared will be chi-squared distributed with two degrees of freedom. Now, assume that capital Y has a standard normal distribution with means zero and a covariance which is just an identity matrix of dimension j by j. So the dimensions here, we assume that capital Y is a j by one vector of normally distributed variables. They all have mean zero, so we have a j by one vector of zeros, and then we have a j by j covariance matrix, which is just an identity matrix, which means that they all have a variance one, and they are and the covariances are all zero. All of the diagonal elements in the variance are just zero. Then it holds that y prime y will be chi-square distributed with j degrees of freedom. And here we note that if we look at y prime y, that is equal to, first look at the dimensions, y prime is 1 by j and y is j by 1. So this means that we have y1, y2, all the way up to yj, and then we multiply that by a column vector, y1, y2, all the way to yj. So multiplying these two together gives us y1 square plus y2 square plus all the way to yj square, which we can also write as the sum from i equal 1 to capital J of yi square, like this. So note that this 
is a one by one, this is a scalar. Finally, seven. Now let x be normally distributed, mean zero and variance v. And here we assume that x is a j by one vector. We have j by one vector of zeros as the mean, and then we have j of v, which is a j by j covariance matrix. Then it holds that x prime v inverse x follows a chi-square distribution with j degrees of freedom. If you look at the dimensions here, note that this is 1 by j, this is j by j, and finally this is j by 1. Multiplying all these together gives us a scalar. So this was the final result for now. We call this S7. And we can summarize these seven results in the following way. See also the slides that are available on Epsilon. Thanks for watching.